When you come back together with each other, you will share these so that you can live and have peace on earth and a great civilization will come about. Please watch on for the multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet, Prophecy of the Golden Age Part 13, the sacred stone tablets of the Hopi and the Four Races. Welcome, happy viewers. I am a Native American fairy named Rainbow in magnificent Portland, Oregon, USA. We in the USA wish that one day all nations will shake hands and the whole world will enjoy everlasting peace. Today, we present you with the astonishing prophecies of a great Native American tribe in our program, multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet. Prophecy of the Golden Age, part 13, the sacred stone tablets of the Hopi and the Four Races. Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed, their words obscured. But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. In the dry highlands of northern Arizona, USA, just east of the Grand Canyon, the Native American Hopi people live simply, very much as their ancestors did thousands of years ago. The Hopi are so ancient that other Native Americans call them the oldest of the people. The word Hopi originates from a term meaning peaceful people, and they truly live up to this name. Kind, but private, they nevertheless have drawn much admiration from the outside world for their vast knowledge and abilities. For instance, the Hopi are known as the world's greatest dry farmers because they have managed to grow a variety of crops on such a desert land without any irrigation. But the secret to the Hopi's miraculous abundance is in their humble and respectful relationship with nature. And it is this vital communion that will play a big role in humanity's survival into the golden age. I mentioned that my spiritual leaders long time ago know that someday their people from foreign country will come upon our land and put up what they call 
Rupiki. That means house of glass to bring about peace and justice and harmony. All people are concerned. The world is really in trouble right now. We are headed for the most destructive thing if we do not correct change and turn around and make life beautiful, clean, and lasting for the great spirit. Because sooner or later, purification will take place and there's no way out of it. Urgent report. Consequences of Global Warming Presented by Mr. Guo Xiong, a noble government employee of the General Affairs Section of Hualien County Environmental Protection Bureau in Taiwan, Formosa, who is dedicated to informing citizens about the global warming emergency. Yoyu. 越来越多的各种温室气体被排放到大气中，地球温度因而上升。地球暖化的结果是，暖化效应导致各种变化，使天气形态更致命。除了极端热浪、洪患和飓风等天然灾害，也越来越频繁。二零一七年八月和九月，在此飓风季节遭重创的加勒比海地区和美国南部，令人不忍回顾。为深入了解这类灾害，美国国家大气与海洋总署地球物理流体动力学实验室开发新模型，研究的关键发现假设：本世纪后期。快速增长的风暴威力势必增强，暗示将出现最糟的状况，也就是科学家所说的六级飓风。在另一项研究中，日内瓦大学研究团队发现洪水量比值由八增加到十四。这项研究的共同作者塞巴斯丁。基斯妥托特副教授解释：当洪水量比值到达十四，我们将面对未知的结果。当前的气候模式还有许多因素尚未纳入。我们将逼近危险的临界点，那将改变地球的运作模式。进入新状态，科学家称这种情况为“热势地球”。热势地球严峻惨事，失控的气候变迁，那时地球会开始一连串自我强化的转变。河岸溃堤、洪水、强大的风暴将更频繁出现，海平面将比现在升高。十至六十公尺。世界知名科学家约翰·罗克斯特教授，他解释：如果热势地球成真，地球上许多地方将变得无法居住。我们必须竭尽所能。恢复家园的生态平衡。世界顶尖大学、牛津大学的研究员发现，饮食中去掉肉类。和乳制品可减少高达百分之七十三的温室气体排放。为了众人美好的未来，现在还来得及改变我们的轨道，但时间所剩不多。地球早已透过剧烈的天气形态发出求救信号。
we're headed for the most destructive thing and there's no way out of it. They should be every chair filled by United Nations people here. They should listen first time to native people upon whose land this is. They should be here. Thank you. On December 10, 1992, respected Hopi elder grandfather Thomas Banyasaya made an urgent plea at the United Nations General Assembly to warn about humanity's destructive ways toward each other and the environment. He was the only living one of the four messengers appointed by the Hopi elders in 1948. That was the critical time that they realized the great purification was approaching according to the Hopi prophecies. Until then, the Hopi prophecies have been kept secret, passed down orally from generation to generation for thousands of years. A number of the prophecies are centered around sacred stone tablets that were given to the Hopi people at the beginning of this world by the Creator, the Great Spirit Masau. Hopi elder grandfather Dan Ifhima recounted, he gave us a set of sacred stone tablets into which he breathed all teachings in order to safeguard his land and life. In these stone tablets were made instructions and prophecies and warnings. Small, flat, and dark with mysterious markings, these four stone tablets still exist today in the care of the bear and fire clans of the Hopi. One of the tablets has a missing corner. It is said that at the time of purification, which is now, the missing piece of the tablet will be returned by Pahana, the Hopi's great white brother who will return from the east. will tell the precise meaning of the tablets and also convey a new religion and establish peace for humankind. The people of peace have long been awaiting Pahana's return. Pahana comes from the word Pahu in the Hopi language, which means ocean. Supreme Master's name is Ching Hai. Qinghai means pure ocean. The Hopi were also told of a series of warning signs leading to the time of purification. Over the recent decades, the Hopi watched these signs being fulfilled one by one. The final stage would be identified by famine, sickness, natural disasters, and finally, the use of powerful weapons. It was the use of the board full of ashes in 1945 that prompted the Hopi elders to go public with their secret knowledge. The Hopi knew humans would develop many powerful technologies that would be abused. In this century, we have seen the First World War and the Second World War, in which the predicted gourd of ashes, 
which you call the atomic bomb, fell from the sky with great destruction. Many thousands of people were destroyed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. For many years, there has been great fear and danger of World War III. The Hopi believe the Persian Gulf War was the beginning of World War III, but it was stopped and the worst weapons of destruction were not used. During her European lecture tour in 1999, a time when yet another regional conflict seemed to be worsening, Supreme Master Ching Hai explained how World War III could be averted. Only enlightenment can destroy ignorance. Only God's love can nullify hatred. Only real brotherhood can dissolve the different conflicts and opinions among our brothers and sisters. So if uh, you and I don't want World War III, you help me. You bring God's love into this planet. You help me to pray together in silence, to know God, to bring His love and heavenly kingdom to this planet. As I am talking to you now, I am also talking to the souls in Yugoslavia and other nations who are still trying to solve conflict by violent means. And that's the reason why I'm in Europe this time and I'm making a tour around Europe, wishing to bring this message into the souls of these brothers and sisters. Of course, also because uh, the request of my very loving fellow brothers and sisters, spiritual practitioners. Uh, recently, they meditate together, so they hope <laughs> to bring more peaceful atmosphere to Europe, and also they have invited me. Y estos hermanos que han meditado and that's why I'm here. And I feel very strongly that uh, all this uh, goodwill from our brothers and sisters and goodwill from my part, uh, together with our silence, prayers in the heart, and spiritual powerful energy, we change the course of history and minimize the World War III that you are so fearful of. Uh, luckily, the war ends, otherwise we might have World War III. My goodness, even I was worried for you guys. Thank God that God blessed them to cool down. Or else, what do you think, huh? It would be very big. Yeah, it started just in Yugoslavia. Yeah, but it might spread everywhere. Oh, everybody was so scared. So it's good that we didn't start again at World War Three over there, huh? Can you imagine? Oh, it's very fragile. Yeah, yeah, but it's okay. It's okay. At least it stopped for a while, and people have time to think of the consequence. If they are, you know, continue in their heat of of anger and and revenge, and then then it's terrible. At least they taste a little of trouble, and now they know it's not worth it to to have war. This is now a time to weigh the choices for our future. We do have a choice. Despite the dire warning signs, there is hope in the Hopi prophecy. A total rebirth was possible. Grandfather Martin Gesher Sioma, another dedicated Hopi elder and the late keeper of the sacred stone tablet of the Fire Clan said, Once they start the cleansing of the land, then a new life that we've had before will revive. We were living in a land called heaven. We hope that will be reestablished. We'll pause briefly to contemplate this and be right back after these messages. Welcome back to the multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet, Prophecy of the Golden Age, Part 13, the Sacred Stone Tablets of the Hopi and the Four Races. According to Hopi history, 
humanity passed through three different worlds or cycles of purification and rebirth. The reason for the purifications was that humanity turned away from the Great Spirit's moral teachings. In the last or third cycle, humans advanced greatly in technology, but became too materialistic and ridiculed spiritual principles. Thus, this era ended with a great flood, which has been recorded by different cultures of the world. Supreme Master Ching Hai has given insight on this topic as during a 2009 climate change video conference in Indonesia. If we have the spiritual RA, we will find that past civilizations both on Earth and other planets, sometimes developed too quickly in the uh, technological sense, but the spiritual development, uh, their store of love was low or empty. And what we see, we see the pattern is that no society can last long if they refuse to sustain the lives of their own members and fellow beings. I mean, include all the beings like animals and trees. Or if they destroy the environment they live in, then that society cannot live long. We can see that also in historical record. Just like the proverb that says, the frog does not drink up all the water in the pond in which he lives, because he needs the water, see? So we cannot destroy the environment and live in it as well. In line with this wisdom are two ancient rock diagrams that illustrate part of the Hopi prophecies. These prophecy rocks are located near the Hopi's Arabi village, the oldest continuous settlement in the U.S. According to this explanation by Grandfather Martin Gasher Sioma, this prophecy rock tells of a positive future after the time of purification, when there will be new, beneficial technologies and instruments that would not pollute the planet. At that time, he said, there also would be no more illness. The other prophecy rock shows two life paths of humanity. The upper path is life with technological advancement but without regard to natural and spiritual law. It ends in a zigzag line representing chaos. The lower path, lined with corn stalks, is one that is in harmony with divine and nature. This line continues past the side of the rock, suggesting a path to everlasting paradise. A vertical line between the two paths indicates that we can choose to switch paths. Similarly, Supreme Master Ching Hai has often reminded that we have a choice as to how we shape our world's future. There are two choices now. One is totally destruction. Another is go ahead with progress in all way of life, including spiritual. And the future is in our hands, really. There's no aliens who can do anything about it. There's no God who punish us. There's no Buddha who bless us. It's only ourselves. We have to make a choice because that's how we go, by making good choice. So spread the good news and let people go back to the natural way of life, the righteous way of life. This is being vegetarian, being virtuous, keep the precept, and live a simple life and positive thinking. And then our world will be no problem. And we will probably live for a few more thousand years in a better condition. According to the Hopi timeline, we are now at the end of the fourth world or cycle that humans experience. Dr. Lee Brown, a respected Native American speaker on the prophecies, said that in this new era, the highest and greatest powers that we have will be released to us. They will be released from that light or soul that we carry to the mind. 
Supreme Master Ching Hai teaches that our greatest spiritual power lies dormant within us. We travel far and wide into the galaxies of the universe. We know things that even the most brilliant scientists in this world are dumbfold. That is the ability of a human being. A true human being is not flesh and bones only, it's not the outer appearance of beauty and charm, but it is the great storage of wisdom, of almighty power that could move mountains and do all kind of marvelous miracles. The world should not be in the, the state uh, that it is right now, if all of us are enlightened, or at least half of us are enlightened, and better still, the majority of us are enlightened. And then no need to talk about peace, peace will come. No need to want anything, because we have wisdom. Wisdom is the Lord, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is within ourselves, that is our almighty power, which <laughs> stay there dormant, and any time we can awaken it and make use of it, at least to our own contentment. At the beginning of this world, the Great Spirit came down and gathered the peoples of the earth together. He said to the human beings, I'm going to send you to four directions, and over time I'm going to change you to four colors. But I'm going to give you some teachings, and you will call these the original teachings. And when you come back together with each other, you will share these so that you can live and have peace on earth, and a great civilization will come about. Happy to see you. Black, white, yellow, and red, whatever. <laughs> what happened to those who were sent by the Great Spirit in the four directions? Have they, or rather we, achieved the great civilization? What will come after the purification? We'll find out in the next episode where we'll also delve more into the Hopi prophecy of Pahana, the long-awaited Great White Brother. He holds the key to the Golden Age. With deep gratitude to the wise Hopi elders for all their efforts to awaken humankind, we pray that we will regain our love and wisdom to live in peaceful harmony on Earth. Thank you for watching today's episode, multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet. Prophecy of the Golden Age, Part 13, the Sacred Stone Tablets of the Hopi and the Four Races. Be sure to watch the next part of our series, discovering more about the Hopi prophecies. Coming up next is Victor Truviano, Breathing in Life, Part 2 of 2, right after Noteworthy News. May your days be filled with wonder and heavenly bliss. For more details on the Hopi prophecies, please visit www.hopistar.org. All 
information concerning the scientific evidence of climate change and its solution is in Supreme Master Ching Hai's book, From Crisis to Peace, free to download at crisistopeace.org. For more details, please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash AP.